uh, give a simple, uh, to, to a more simple uh, uh, kind of example that we can build up from. Uh, well, it's, this is a very classic uh, uh, emergence of largest uh, uh, giant components in on like edge chain and for GMP networks. Uh, the code is very simple. We, we just that's the, the operating part is the this these three lines here. So for we have a set of values of, of p, uh, we're looping over them, generating a random network, edge chain network. <laughs> Uh, calculate, uh, calculate the largest uh, kind of component size and then just plotting everything. Uh, but uh, th this is slow, how can we make it fast? But that's kind of our main problem. Uh, Every one of us at some point had this problem, right? Uh, well, you, if your computer has more than one uh, CPU cores, so how can we use that? Uh, uh, a lot of you have previously done, on Python at least, have done uh, multi-processing, but uh, in particular is uh, C++ code, so uh, maybe we can do multi-thread. And we, we're going to get into the difference between them, but Python 3 now uh, has a lot of built-in stuff for doing actual multi-threading. Uh, especially in the, in the next few versions, they're going to be considering, considering uh, kind of more and more. Uh, so, okay, so here's an example. We, you see the same like operating lines up here, can generate a random network and then generating the largest kind of component size. Uh, now we put, them in a, put all of this in one function and then we're calling this function from inside the thread code executor. Uh, so, so the idea here, at least for me, is that the best way of managing uh, parallelism is to have the, the user do it. Not because it's easier for me <laughs> as a library implementer, but because the major problem that people have is that you can't assume the context of the environment that the user is trying to run your code. It's really easy to just slap like a OpenMP in your code and just have it use all the available processing power on the computer, but that would only work on the local computer. If they, like I had to use a computation cluster uh, which I had a lot of problems trying to get uh, OpenMP based software to, to work reliably on it because they would see, oh, the computer has 128 CPU cores, I'm just going to use all of them. Well, I, wouldn't, I didn't have access to all of them, and that would have caused the uh, you know, inefficiencies. So here the user would say, okay, use eight. I have eight cores, use eight. Eight workers. Obviously, we use nine because of the main uh, uh, thread as well. Uh, right, so also a, a temporal network example, uh, very similar to the previous one, this is, is well, temporal networks, uh, uh, the giant component doesn't exist in the same way as in the, the, the static networks, uh, so we're calculating reachability, a specifically number of unique vertices reachable if we start from a spreading process from a specific point, a specific node at a specific time. And uh, uh, instead of doing one specific point at one specific time, we're calculating all possible starting points simultaneously. So that's what this outcluster size estimate function does. Uh, uh, it estimates uh, properties of reachability in temporal networks from all possible starting points. Uh, right, so again, kind of similar. That we put that bit in the function, let's just forget about it. There's uh, this, this bit here, random fully mixed temporal network, it just generates a kind of fully mixed temporal network where every node can connect to every other node with a constant rate. There are other ways of generating random networks as well. And same as before, we have the thread pool executor with eight workers, and we just call that function in, in the thread pool executor with different values for waiting time. And, uh, okay, so in this last example, actually, we can see the benefit of having multi-threading as opposed to multi-processing. Multi, multi uh, the, the main benefit is that, well, you can share memory. That comes in two different flavors. One is that in Python, when you do multi-processing, at each end of the game, when you're starting the you're processing and when you're getting the results, it has to marshal or serialize everything into pickles, send it to a different process, unpickle it, do the thing, pickle it back, 
I've sent it to the main process on Bitcoin. And each of these processes would have its own copy of the Python runtime and uh, all the libraries loaded, uh, you know. So it kind of wastes a lot of memory and a lot of time. Uh, Multi-threading, you don't have that problem. Uh, or at least not to the same extent. So here, for example, this network I'm creating, uh, and here I'm passing a reference to that, uh, that, that network here as G to this average volume function. Uh, that is shared across all threads. That kind of helps you to have this beautiful green image of all the cores being used at the same time and not much of the memory being used. So this is a huge issue for people that work on or, or want to work on a large custom, uh, custom computing environment, uh, custom computing environment. The ratio of memory to, to CPU cores. You, you always leave some cores unused because you run out of memory. Well, in a lot of cases, you someone, maybe your problem is special, but uh, shared memory can help you kind of reach to this kind of state of bliss. Uh, how can you learn more about this reticular thing? Uh, well, the, the website is reticular.network, uh, and well, you can use Pip install as well. Uh, and you can also come talk to me if you're interested. So, Thank you.